With the world's attention focused on Ukraine, in a forgotten corner of Europe lies another conflict, frozen in time. For over three decades now, this has left the tiny neighbouring country of Moldova in a dangerous situation. The small nation, being one of the poorest and sadly also one of the most corrupt in Europe, is attempting to rejuvenate itself by seeking to join the European Union and integrating itself more firmly with the West. However, there is one region within the country's borders that is strongly opposed to this, seen by practically the whole world as just a rebellious part of Moldova. This particular place sees itself as an independent country, calling themselves the Pridnestrovian Moldovian Republic, or its more commonly known name, Transnistria. These people, being mostly heavily pro-Russian, have resisted unification with the parent state, Moldova. Instead, seeing themselves outside Moldova's government's jurisdiction. So, what's the origin of this dispute in history? Why hasn't this frozen conflict been solved? And how is this situation dangerous for Moldova? The Republic of Moldova can be found in Eastern Europe, completely cut off from the sea. The country is therefore landlocked. At just over 13,000 square miles, the country is pretty small. This makes the country larger than Belgium in Western Europe, yet smaller than Guinea-Bissau in Western Africa. The country has a population of about just over 2.6 million, and of these, the majority religion is Orthodox Christianity, with about 90% of Moldovans following the religion. Surrounded by Romania to its west and Ukraine to its east, the country of Moldova only really sprang up recently through the collapse of the Soviet Union. Although, the history of the overall area of Moldova goes back centuries. Moldova was first mentioned around the 1350s when the Principality of Moldovia was founded. Later, the Principality would become a vassal of the growing Ottoman Empire, but with the decline of the Ottomans in the 18th and 19th centuries, it would be influenced by the rise of another power that would soon shape the future of Moldova and Transnistria, Russia. Under its expansionist Tsars, they chipped away at the Ottomans' territory, taking Transnistria in the 1790s and finally making the Ottoman Empire cede its largely neglected eastern provinces to the Russians. This newly acquired territory came to be known as Bessarabia. What remained of the Principality of Moldovia would unite with another kingdom, the Kingdom of Wallachia, to form the larger Principality of Romania in 1859, becoming autonomous but within the Ottoman Empire still. It would later fight for independence and become independent in 1878 as a Principality than later as a kingdom in 1881. The new kingdom of Romania wished to absorb more territory, specifically the former province of Bessarabia, but this dream would never happen during this period, as the area would remain under Russian administration until the Second Russian Revolution in 1917, when the vast country plunged into complete chaos and Romania saw an opportunity. Bessarabia would finally become Romanian. The new neighbour of Romania, the Soviet Union, Bitter about this event, established the Moldovian ASSR, the Moldovian Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, east of the Dniester River. In 1939, the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, where they agreed in a secret protocol to cover up much of Eastern Europe, with this part of Romania being included as being in the new Soviet zone. So in 1940, Romania received an ultimatum from the Soviet Union, telling them to cede these parts of its territory to the Soviets or face war. Romania, knowing it couldn't stand up to the Soviet Union alone in a war, agreed to hand the region over in exchange for continued peace. So, with the area of Moldova back under Moscow's control, Transdinistria, being a mainly Slavic area from the east bank of the Genesta River, which had never been united before with Moldova administratively, were merged, although this wouldn't last long. Meanwhile, Romania was forced to endure another loss of territory to Hungary and then to Bulgaria, finally forcing Romania to join the Axis powers in an effort to secure what's left of the rump state in the hope of being able to recover territory elsewhere, when a year later, the country joined its Axis allies in its invasion of the Soviet Union. With Germany's help, Romania would re-establish its rule over Bessarabia and other areas. This, however, didn't last long, as by 1944, it became clear to Romania that Germany was going to lose the Second World War, and so, it switched sides. Despite its change of heart at the end of the conflict, Romania did regain its territory back from Hungary, but not from Bulgaria or the Soviet Union. Romania accepted the loss of territory to Bulgaria, 
but not from the Soviet Union, who were hoping to make sure that the region wouldn't return to Romania. They first changed the demographics of the area by moving in tens of thousands of Ukrainians and Russians into Moldova, whilst also implementing the Cyrillic alphabet to differentiate it between the Latin-based writing system of Romanian. As the Soviet Union began to slowly unravel, the Latin-based alphabet was reintroduced in 1989. Moldova then finally declared independence as the Soviet Union dissolved. Whilst the newly independent Moldova was struggling to establish itself in the New World as it was attempting to negotiate with its province of Gaugauzia to bring it back into the Republic following its disapproval of the country's independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. Though, by 1994, the Moldovan government had managed to successfully, peacefully solve this dispute, bringing this province into the country. They did this by giving the region of Gaugauzia a high degree of autonomy by granting it concessions. The other region of Moldova that sought independence and got it de facto was Transnistria. This region fought a brief war against the Moldovan armed forces and with the help of the Russian troops left from the Soviet Union, who were still garrisoned there, they intervened and helped the Transnistrians fight off the Moldovans, helping to create a de facto state. And this frozen conflict still hasn't been resolved to this very day. Recently, the self-declared country even asked to become part of Russia, although this request was ignored. Nowadays, Moldova is in a dangerous situation. With war in Ukraine and neutrality in the country's constitution, it remains unclear how Moldova will handle its security affairs in such a tense position. It will also have to handle its affairs with Gagauzia in an effort to try to stop it from breaking away. You see, as part of the agreement in 1994, Gagauzia has the right to independence if neighbouring Romania and Moldova were to reunite. And considering Gagauzia strongly opposed this on polls, yet this is very popular in the rest of Moldova and even in Romania, this will become a major problem in the future, and especially now as Moldova seeks to join the European Union. If Moldova seeks to gain NATO membership, Transnistria will also need to be addressed as countries generally aren't welcomed into NATO if there is disputed territory involved as NATO doesn't want to get involved in these potential wars. And so, if Moldova wants to join the alliance, it will need to sort this issue out by either giving up the territory or convincing the de facto state that it should join Moldova and be given some sort of autonomy similar to Gigalzia. As mentioned earlier, the country's constitution will need to also be amended if it wishes to join NATO and abandon its neutrality. Finally, the issue is what will happen now that Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine is occurring just to the east. There have been reports that Russia may enter Moldova through Transnistria to link up with the small amount of Russian soldiers stationed in Transnistria acting as peacekeepers. Although looking at current maps of the conflict, it's unlikely that the Russians will reach the borders of Moldova so that it could launch large-scale military action within the country as the Ukrainian military resistance is just simply too strong, although the situation could change quickly. There have been explosions fairly recently and reports that Transnistria itself may help invade Ukraine and attack Ukraine from the rest to help out Russia, but with very few soldiers, Ukraine could easily deal with them and if it wanted to, strike back and invade the self-declared republic although this would obviously worry the Moldovan government in Chisinau over Ukrainian troops officially in their country. Either way, Moldova is in a precarious situation. Whatever happens, let's hope that Moldova and its many problems with its different communities are soon solved through dialogue peacefully. I hope you found the video interesting. If you want to learn more about other separatist movements in Europe where I mentioned Transnistria, please click here. And as always, thanks for watching this video.